Hello everyone, it's Vance Willis from StudioTech.TV and today I'm at the Clark Power Powell Fusion Seminar and we have an expo going on here and we um, ran into um, some really cool technology that I wanted to walk over and uh, show you guys about. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that right now. So I'm here with Dr. Winchester from DocStream Incorporated and I'm just going to let him talk about how he's using technology uh, in the workplace and this is some really cool stuff. Thanks, Vance. I appreciate the introduction. Uh, I'm Brandon Winchester from DocStream Incorporated. Uh, I'm also an anesthesiologist at the Andrews Institute down in Gulf Breeze, Florida. Uh, my clinical specialty is regional anesthesia. I do ultrasound guided procedures for nerve blocks for folks that are coming and having orthopedic surgery on their shoulders, hips, knees, etc. And uh, in my spare time, what I like to do is, is teach people how to do the procedures that I do in the hospital. And one of the things that we ran into difficulty with is we weren't able to get out to the conferences, to the hospitals, to proctor. We weren't able to get out and reach enough doctors who needed education to teach them the type of things that we do. So myself and two other physicians, Dr. Stuart Grant and Dr. James Chen, started a company called DocStream. And what DocStream specializes is uh, the way in which we uh, deliver our education is web-based. So we take everything that we used to do in person by going and teaching seminars and by going and proctoring procedures, and we take it to the web. And so it's been, a, it's been an interesting process the last couple of years going through the steps and optimizing how we do this. And what we're going to be demonstrating today is what's called the DocStream Doc in the Box. Uh, and I have Clark Powell, uh, who's not only putting on this conference today, uh, but are the integrators of the DocStream Doc in the Box to thank for this system. Uh, basically what the DocStream Doc in the Box does is record high definition video uh, in a multi-camera environment uh, at video conferences using standards-based software like GoToMeeting, uh, using Skype, uh, using, you know, uh, systems that don't cost much more than $50 a month at most to video conference. Uh, we record AVCHD video. What that means is basically standard type HD video that you can put into any iMovie pre program, any kind of Final Cut type program, any editor that's out there in the market. You can take the video footage that you record and put it through a simple edit process. You can upload it to DocStream channels. That's kind of our main business model is to create channels that deliver medical and other types of video content on the web. And you can live video conference the type of content that we're going to see here in a moment using those channels that I mentioned. So basically in a nutshell, what DocStream does is gives people an easy ability to utilize multi-camera video using the web as the avenue. So Great. Well, show us some of this, uh, show us some of this equipment and how it works. Today we're going to be demonstrating the, uh, the DocStream Doc in the box here. And like I said before, this is basically a video conferencing and video recording system. The core of the system is the primary cart that you see right in front of you. And in a moment, we'll talk about the secondary cart that's wirelessly connected to the, to the core cart. Uh, the components of the system that are of importance are a video switcher and a scaler. What that allows us to do is, unlike a simple Skype video conference where you have one webcam built into your computer, we have four video inputs. We have video input one, you can see up here is just a Vadio HD pan tilt zoom camera. Just behind me we have video input two, this is another Vadio HD pan tilt zoom camera that comes in wirelessly to the primary cart. Uh, we have video input three, and this is again going back to my specialty, this is an ultrasound from Sonocyte, it's called a Sonocyte S-Nerve. That's our input three, and that goes into the scalar switcher. Input four is just a simple CPU. This is a Windows-based operating system CPU. And we have the digital input from that CPU going out with a DVI cable. Uh, and that's our switcher. We have those four inputs. Now, is that going into the TriCaster? It's not going into the TriCaster. We have two dock-in-the-box systems. What you're seeing is more of a dock-in-the-box light system. And we've actually been, uh, been recently featured with the new tech TriCaster at the uh, Tech Expo uh, in, uh, in Las Vegas last month. Uh, they featured the full-fledged version of the Dock in the Box uh, in the Infocom uh, tech, a AV Technology End User Awards for applications in healthcare. And their new tech is actually right next door to us, the booth right next door to us. And using their TriCaster, we've implemented that system into a little bit of a larger uh, endoscopy cart-based system that allows us to do more studio-type shoots, uh, stand in front of the green screen and do real high-end video conferencing and, and video recording of, of studio-quality content. When we want to get you know, down and dirty, when we want to get from bed space to bed space to bed space in a little bit more of a condensed environment, we've built this dock-in-the-box light that has a little bit of a smaller form factor, a little bit of a smaller footprint that allows us to do that. 
so what are the four, what, what's the device that's driving the four inputs that you just talked about? The device is called a TV1 switcher. Okay. TV1, uh, okay. Switcher scaler from TV1, and this is sort of the hot swap between the Dock in the Box full and the Dock in the Box light, is a TriCaster versus a TV1. Okay, TV1. perfect. Okay, a lot, a, lot of, a lot of our viewers yeah, are familiar with that. Version. Okay, right. Yeah, we'll be you know, happy to know that you can have the full version or the light version, and, and we use TV1. We've trialed a number of different switcher and scalers, and this one does a lot of the things that we're right. going to show you in a moment that we've been real pleased with. Um, the first thing that it does is basically switch, like any switcher does, it switches from input to input. Uh, the nice slick way to do this, this is where the sexiness factor comes okay. in of the dock in the box, is to do it with an iPad app. And you see the Crestron uh, booth just around the corner there. This is a Crestron control app that's custom branded for DockStream. And what it does is it takes the 10 presets that you're allowed to use uh, within any TV1 switcher and allows it to be a touchscreen control panel. So we've pre-programmed we've pre 10 presets for the dock in the box to be able to go through. Uh, preset one is going to be what you see on this camera. And by the way, everything you see on this screen is also recorded uh, onto an SD card in HD. It's also the webcam source into a webcam input in GoToMeeting or Skype or any number of software-based video okay. applications. So this would be program out. Essentially. This would be program, program out. out equivalent. Okay. Whatever the switcher is, whatever the device is, okay. this is the equivalent of program out. So video input one is kind of what we do in the, in the medical uh, sector when we're recording procedures. This is kind of our big picture shot. This shows how the patient is positioned. This shows how I'm positioned, how I'm holding my ultrasound probe okay. in my hand. So the person who's watching, who wants to be able to learn how to do the procedures I'm doing, can see exactly what the big picture looks like. The closer picture shot, and by the way, this camera control uh, uh, can be done with this iPad app as well. These, these, these Vadio cameras are RS-232 controlled. Right. We have a little Crestron server in the dock in the box that allows us to have full camera control. And by full control, I mean pan left, right, up, down, zoom in, zoom out. We can do it fast with this little touch app here. You can see that going fast up and down. Really nice. Or we can do it slow. If we want to do a little bit more of a studio effect, we can pan slowly left and right zoom in and zoom out. So that's all done with the, uh, with the Crestron control application built into our little, our little app. Input two is the secondary camera. So what we found actually is that when we're recording procedures that if you get just the big picture shot, the practitioner, the physician or the nurse who's watching on the other end doesn't get a, uh, an idea for exactly where the hand positions are for the person who's doing the procedure. So when people are doing nerve blocks and they want to learn how to do a nerve block, they want to see exactly where my needle is and they want to see exactly where the probe is. And so by getting that close-up shot, like you do coming from this camera over here, you can satisfy that close-up shot need for any recording of a procedure. So Great idea. Big picture shot, close-up shot. But you're still missing a very key component when it comes to ultrasound guided procedures or any type of uh, procedure, whether it's endoscopy or whether it's an MRI or whether it's anything else. And that is the actual imaging itself. So in order to get this S nerve from Sonosite into the dock in the box switcher, we take a DVI output of the, of the S-nerve, it goes into the TV1 switcher, which scales it to 720p resolution and becomes our input three. So now on input three, you have this Sonosite input. So if I'm making a recording of an ultrasound, they're gonna see the highest resolution possible of this ultrasound image. So a doctor who's kind of a, an imaging aficionado will watch that and say, okay, that's high resolution, that's a good quality image. And we're, 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 pretty, uh, we're pretty picky uh, about the videos that we watch. You know, you'll see a lot of videos of procedures on YouTube, for example, that are low resolution. So the dock in the box allows us to maintain that high definition resolution. So that's our input three. Our input four is simply our computer screen. That's what we'll show you in a moment. That allows us to do the video conferencing with GoToMeeting and Skype. Input five is where it gets pretty cool. We get the picture-in-picture -picture effect. So when somebody's watching us do a procedure, they can see the camera as well as the ultrasound. That's camera one. Preset six is the second camera as the picture-in-picture -picture that you can see behind me. Preset seven is where we introduce what's called the virtual laser pointer. And I'm going to go ahead and start one of the recordings that I have of a procedure I recently did at the Andrews Institute. Okay, so I'm able to play back a recording as input preset seven from a, what we call a, a, a saphenous nerve block. This patient was having an anterior cruciate ligament reconstruction. It was an athlete who injured themselves playing soccer. I'm able to do a nerve block right at the mid thigh that a lot of physicians in the country don't know how to do. So I make this video to show them exactly how to do that nerve block. And then when I'm using the, what I call the virtual laser pointer, I can take this input on this screen I can zoom in on the area that I call virtual laser pointer, and I can use the weatherman chroma key effect to remove the black, so all that's left is the laser pointer. So now I can record and point at things on the screen. 
I can point at their right big toe, I can point at their knee, I can point at this image, this is the sartorius muscle on the ultrasound image, and so on and so forth. So in real time, while people are watching in real time or watching later on DocStream channels or on YouTube, I can annotate the whole thing without having to do really any post edits at all. In my, in my line of work, instead of making one video that's CNN quality, I want to make 40 videos that are good quality, that are high definition quality, but don't take hours and hours of work. So that virtual laser pointer allows me to do that. Input 8 is in real time now, again, using the laser pointer, but with our real time 3 input. So I can point at your nose, at your right eye, your left eye, and so forth. Very neat. Very neat. I can do the same with our rear camera, with the virtual laser pointer, pointing things out anatomically or otherwise. And then lastly, since we're teaching ultrasound, I can point out the key anatomic landmarks on the ultrasound image. I can say, that's your anterior muscle, that's your posterior muscle, that's the left of the screen, that's the right of the screen, and so on and so forth. So that's all well and good for recorded video. If that's kind of a, a quick demonstration of how we record video and make it easily editable and uploadable to YouTube, Vimeo, or DocStream channel. What I haven't really shown you yet is the integration for the live component. So imagine everything that was going to the recorder that I just showed you now going in as a webcam input into the computer. So Anybody who's ever done a GoToMeeting or a Skype, usually it's the webcam that's built into the computer and that's what the webcam source is. There's no ability to pan, tilt, zoom. There's no ability to switch to your ultrasound image or back to your rear shot or your front shot. So what we've basically enabled ourselves to do is have the usual webcam from Skype become a webcam on steroids from Skype. We're actually able to make it the multi-camera input of the dock in the box. So the way we do that is basically, you know, in the secret sauce of the system here. Uh, you can see here, this is my webcam viewer. This is a GoToMeeting viewer. And now what you're seeing is everything on this screen is being visualized by all 10, 20, 24 people in the GoToMeeting uh, that are watching from around the world. And it's very cool. We've had doctors watch in from Beijing, China. We've had nurses and physicians watch from Milwaukee. You know, people can come in from anywhere, anytime. They can watch from their laptop, whether it be Mac or PC, or they can even watch from their iPad using the GoToMeeting iPad app. Uh, so that's been neat to be able to bring people in from all over. Uh, and the way in which we connect is simply by opening up the GoToMeeting application, pressing go, and emailing out the link. And, and that's it. We're connected. Uh, some people that are watching might wonder how we're connected to the internet. And that's one of the keys to the dock in the box that makes it unique, is that not only can we connect via a standard Wi-Fi network or can we connect via a standard Ethernet jack, a lot of places that you go to, a lot of hospitals that you go to to teach don't have Ethernet. They don't have high-speed Internet. And so you go in with a 4G Internet card, and I can show you a little close-up. This is a router from a company called CradlePoint. Uh, what they allow you to do is decide for yourself which internet source you want to use. And so this cradle point router allows us to choose between hardwired internet, internet or Wi-Fi internet, or in this case, you can see our 4G Verizon long-term evolution LTE dongle, and that's now giving us 4G internet connection. So this whole dock in the box video conference, this whole go to meeting can now be completely untethered from any internet requirements at the facility that you're at. What that means to me is I can deploy a dock in the box to a hospital in Timbuktu, not rely on their firewalled internet connection source. I can bring my own internet, so to speak, bring in my own 4G card, and actually connect that way. So Okay, so, so just a, a quick question. No interference problems with any of your technology or anything in the hospitals with the 4G communication? 4G Some internet has not been an interference issue. The, first, the, first, the prerequisite is that it has to be a 4G area. And anybody who's looked at the Verizon 4G LTE maps... It's I, spotty. I, it's spotty, you know, and there's certain areas that have it and certain areas that don't. It's, it's very expansive compared to other 4G markets. So the lesson learned in terms of internet connection is that Wi-Fi is good, Hardwire in is best, 4G is still excellent, 3G, not so much. You don't ever want to try to do an HD video conference in 3G. That's kind of a lesson that we've, we've learned. So those are the prerequisites, hardwired Wi-Fi or 4G. But I'll tell you what, uh, from somebody who's not impressed easily by technology, the Verizon 4G LTE technology it blows the socks off of any other technology I've seen. So that's our internet connectivity. And then the last sort of thing that's, that's neat is not only can people watch remotely, uh, we can do virtual proctoring where I send a doc in the box to a hospital and I can watch and comment on them during procedures. I can have the doc in the box at the Andrews Institute where they watch and comment on procedures that I'm doing. But using the simple desktop sharing application built in to go to meeting, I can actually give them virtual laser pointer control. So for example, if I share my desktop screen and go to meeting and I share my webcam simultaneously, on the webcam, they'll see my ultrasound image, uh, and when I give them desktop control, they'll be able to use their own mouse 
to point things out on the screen. And what the, the usefulness of this is sort of, is sort of limitless. I can have medical students 3,000 miles away in a different country go through a pop quiz process. I can say, all right, we're going to do a procedure right now. And as the procedure is going on, I'm going to want you to use your mouse wherever you're at and point out the important structures on the ultrasound screen that we're doing. So the ability to integrate the telemedicine value of a virtual laser pointer is pretty much limitless. And on the flip side, as I'm doing the procedure, I myself can actually point at things on the screen too. So it's a, it'll, it, it allows a next, level, next generation, a next level up of intercommunication in the tele, telemedicine sector that you don't see from a simple codec from Polycom or from Cisco or, or products like that. Uh, and not to mention, you know, quite frankly, a much better price point that you get from some of those codecs as well. So <clears throat> one of the questions that we would have, since we do a lot of this too, this, this hobbyist put together technology to make it work for what people are looking for. Yeah. Who made all of these parts and pieces work? Is this something that, that you've done through trial and error? Or you said, this is a need that I, yeah. I, I need to figure out. And, and because we talked a little earlier about the Skype integration, we talk about it almost every week, yeah. about how do you get a switcher's output, the program out, yeah. and be able to do things like you're just showing, have multiple inputs yeah. that are not macros, but they're actually almost like virtual inputs on the TriCaster. How do you get those back to the other end in real time? Yeah. So if you hold this device up or you point to this on the screen or you show the ultrasound, mm -hmm. that the person on the other end sees it in real time, not delayed by the stream, right. because we have a, what, a 17 to 25 second delay yeah. if they're watching on the stream. That's because right. you're recording and, yeah. and, and then you're also sending it to them, but you, yeah. you may also, you probably could broadcast this if you wanted. Yeah. Now, you're probably more closed system than like we are, where we, we send it up to bit gravity and anyone can watch. Yeah. So we don't have paywalls where you would, in education, you probably would. Well, in answering your question, there's a, there's a, there's a couple of, couple of uh, components to that question. One is, you know, how did we make all the pieces work? How did we come to realize each piece works and which pieces don't? It was truly a labor of love. It was truly a, a trial and error system over the course of you know two years. Every little piece that you're seeing, even this little Lenovo USB wireless mouse that you mentioned to me off camera, you have four of these. You know, you try one that works and you try one that doesn't. And as it turns out, this is the best little USB mouse on the market right I agree. Now. You know, similarly, when I'm sterile and I'm doing a procedure, I can't, behind a sterile drape, I can't use the roller ball. So I have to use this little Logitech touch mouse and Velcro it onto a little sheet here, a little, a little platform here. And behind the, the sterile drape, I can now control my switcher and my mouse, you know, with the wireless touch mouse. So trial and error, you know, Amazon is my best friend, you know, bestbuy.com is my second best friend. I like to think that I've got a, a degree in Google and a minor in YouTube, I like to say. <laughs> so it's really true tr through trial and error that we've made each piece compatible. And really, I went through the steps one by one by one, this works, this doesn't using sort of a homegrown prototype dock in the box system that I wheeled around with me from bed space to bed space in the hospital, quite literally held together by duct tape and bubble gum. And it's not until I got with Clark Powell, you know, with Craig and Jim and the folks at Clark Powell that I was able to make this much more of a professional level system. So the way making it all work, that was my responsibility. I trialed and aired it for months, if not years, to make it all come, come together and work properly. But it wasn't until working with Clark Powell that I really made it work and, 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 and hum like a professional production piece. So going back to your, your second level of your question, and that is to how do you make it work with these standards-based systems with the Skypes and the GoToMeetings and the, and the WebExes and whatnot. Uh, that has to do with the capture components. You know, you want, there's all sorts of capture systems out there, capture cards, capture USB 3.0, there's Thunderbolt, there's et cetera, et cetera. When you're a PC user, you know, far and away, you know, the best capture cards are made by a company called Osprey. Mm -hmm. You know, I've, I've tried them all. I've tried Blackmagic's, I've tried the AJA, you know, I've tried AJA. I'm, uh, Black, you know, Blackmagic makes a great product that works for a lot of good things. The integration with Skype is not good. The integration with GoToMeeting is, 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 not, is not consistent. Mm -hmm. uh, the only real consistency in the PC market that I've seen in terms of capture systems, capture cards, et cetera, has been with Osprey. Now, unfortunately, Osprey for a while didn't make 64-bit capture cards, so there was a long lull where in order to do HD video, you needed 64-bit, but in order to use Osprey, you needed 32-bit, so it was kind of a stuck in the middle, and they, they vowed not to ever plan to upgrade their, their drivers to 64-bit. They finally did. Now the next generation is, okay, Osprey isn't compatible with, with Macs. It's only compatible with PCs. So when you're a PC user, that doesn't cost you much, but when you're a Mac user, not so much. You know, you, you sort of you sort of can't use an Osprey. You got to switch to something else. Uh, and like we talked about before, Blackmagic has probably uh, probably fits the bill there for for Macs. When you're a Mac user, Blackmagic seems to be the way to go. Uh, not being a Mac user, I can't speak with any degree of expertise. Well, we're doing a lot of Thunderbolt. Um, 
you know, testing with Thunderbolt devices. We're using Intensity Extreme now. Um, you can get that to work on the Mac side in full HD. Um, we've not tried to go to meeting that kind of stuff, which I'd love to do. But um, the Thunderbolt interface, since you can do bi-directional high definition video, um, is, is going to be really, really nice. It's going to be absolutely nice. So, so a, Mac, a Mac Mini, yeah. you know, being very small, which is, which is very important to you because this needs, these need to be compact. We're looking at an iPad. We're looking at a, at a very compact, you know, system here that rolls around. Very yeah. high-end, very nice uh, system, which, like you said, needs to be sterile, that kind of stuff. Yeah. The Mac Mini uh, with Thunderbolt oh, yeah. it, it may, may be something in the future you want to look at. Absolutely. Thunderbolt is, is probably one of the most blow. I talked earlier about being blown away by Verizon 4G long-term yeah. evolution technology. That blew me away in the Internet connectivity area, uh, in the area of, of just absolute incredible speed bandwidth going in and out of a computer. Thunderbolt is like nothing else I've ever seen. The problem currently is that Thunderbolt is, is Mac and Mac only. However, I've been reading about the, the preliminary testing using products like Magma's ExpressBox and the new Espresso that takes three capture Three T. It just was it was just shipped yesterday. Yeah, yeah, thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah. So there's a Mag there's a Magma three T Espresso that has three capture cards that can be used with Thunderbolt, presumably for most applications for Macs, because Thunderbolt only works with the Mac. However, some of the preliminary reports from the forums are that using the Thunderbolt and a PC capture card using boot camp on the Mac to fire it up as a PC may actually allow those capture cards or those, those, those PCI Express cards uh, to work when it's fired up in, in PC right. mode. So there may be a point in the near future where a, an Osprey type product or a, or, a, or a capture card only working with a PC actually works with a Mac when fired up as a PC using boot camp and the Thunderbolt technology. But until that day comes, you know, I'm sort of I'm sort of tethered in the PC world and uh, Well, there are PC motherboards that are just now shipping with Thunderbolt, so you may want to may want to try it. Yeah, you may, yeah, you may, sure. yeah, you may check that. Yeah. Absolutely. <clears throat> but this is this is great. So so it's recording. You use this primarily for education. Yeah. Primarily for education. Primarily That's for education. Okay. And and like we talked about, you know, all the videos that I make, they're available on blockjocks.com. Um, blockjocks.com. That's that's the educational website. It's it's open access website. There's really we have some self self promoting uh, banner ads for some of the courses that we take. So doctors and nurses will visit the site. We promote the courses that we have in our little banner ads on the right. But we don't really have a real large monetization strategy. The real goal for us is to make as much high quality content as we could distribute it in as many avenues as we can, including DocStream, Vimeo, and YouTube, uh, and get it out to as many viewers as we can. And we've been, we've been, we've been pleased with that plan so far. Um, but as far as you know, business-mindedness, we're much more about the education than we are about the business-mindedness. I, I think it's great. I think that the mating of technology and what's you know, coming down the pipe in the medical profession with you know, DNA and with everything that's about to explode on technology is amazing. I, I'm just I'm intrigued by it. I don't understand it all, but I'm really intrigued by being able to program DNA and, and everything that's going on in that field. So I mean, I think it's really cool. I think, I think it's really cool. I think in medicine and with telemedicine and frankly any application, but of course my focus is medicine. If you have multiple video sources and you have an educational need, you have people out there around the world that need to learn what you, what you have to offer, that the DocStream Doc in the Box is, is as sophisticated of a system and as portable of a system that's out there. So we're, we're real proud of it and we're real, real pleased at, at, at what great work Clark Powell has done for us with it. So do you miss Duke in, in Durham? Uh, I miss Duke in Durham, but I think uh, anyone who's seen, I live in a, a place called Portofino. Uh, it's a beachfront community in Pensacola Beach. Uh, I work at an ambulatory surgery center taking care of athletes uh, each and every day. I take no call and I work no weekends. So uh, although I miss my friends and I miss Duke and Durham, I, I think most would agree that I've stumbled upon Florida. a job down there. Florida weather's got to be great. Yeah, I mean, Florida weather's great and quite, you've got to love the Andrews Institute. I work, I work at a wonderful institution. So uh, no, 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 not too much nostalgia for the past. I'm real, real, uh, real pleased about the current and the future. Well, excellent. Well, Dr. Winchester, thank you so much. Very nice to meet you. Thanks. And, and I, I hope that we get to talk soon. May get you on Studio Tech sometime to talk about this technology. Why don't we have a, have a plan to get, you, get, get a Studio Tech to DocStream connection during one of the procedures or webcasts today? Let's do it. I'd love it. Thank you. All right.